We welcome you to the Cayman Islands Classic for the fourth and final matchup of the day. That includes a top 10 showdown between the sixth ranked Yukon Huskies and the UCLA Bruins, who are the only undefeated team in the field. Before we get into this matchup here in the Don Gray Gymnasium, we are going to take a look at how things have unfolded throughout the first three games. Virginia taking down Tulane for their first time in program history. LSU getting a big win over Niagara. And how about Virginia Tech escaping the upset? Gets the one-point edge over Kansas. And that brings us to the matchup that everyone has wanted to see. Angel Gray alongside the former national champion in Kelly Deo. And you have a top 10 matchup. UCLA, UConn, everyone wants to see this live. The performers, the individual performers, these teams are two of the top in the country. You've got Paige Beckers, you've got Lauren Beth, you've got Charisma Osborne. The field is full of great performers. My question is, what team can put it together for 40 minutes defensively, get their offense execution going at a high level, and come out with the win tonight? We'll talk about the guest team as we have the visitors with UCLA. And Lauren Bess already on this season has three double-doubles, has been a fierce force in the inside. Yes, yeah, she is the epitome of efficiency. 78% from the field. She's drawing double and triple teams. She's finishing well. She is a rim protector in the paint. She does everything for this UCLA ball club. And on the other side for Aaliyah Edwards, the third team All-American and Big East first team. Aaliyah Edwards is just one of those seniors that you can look to her for consistency. Yeah, she is one of those program players. She has played under Gino Oriema. She knows what he expects. She can also score at will inside. She's a tremendous defender. Her quickness doesn't get talked about enough. She can get to the rim. That first step is excellent, and she will be a formidable opponent for Lauren Betts inside. Well, let's take a look at the UCLA lineup. Starting off with the Bruins, as you can see them in there. Blue jerseys, Kiki Rice, Charisma, Charisma Osborne, London Jones, Angelica Gonzalez, and Lauren Beck. And on the other side, we just got news from their SID that KK Arnold will get her first career start. So she'll be in that lineup as well. They're going to have to forego for the third game. Tough to see with AZ Fudd out with an ACL. And then you see Aaliyah Edwards, Aubrey Griffin, and Paige Beckers as well. Nika Mule also in the starting lineup for the Yukon Huskies. And if you can't hear the following that they have brought to the Cayman Islands, they are on both sides of this gymnasium, travel very well. And they're excited to see this top 10 matchup between UCLA, their last match, actually just a 10 point game. And Gino Ariema as well as Corey Close have gotten really familiar with each other over the past several years. They've seen each other head to head over the last five. Right away, that's tip to Jones and UCLA will start off with the rock. Dugalich from outside, couldn't knock that one down, but that's a shot that she can well enough hit, oh, yeah. even in her size. You mentioned it, coming into this ball game, UCLA is huge on the perimeter. Yeah, even just sitting here and watching them warm up, uh, just the size is unbelievable. Lauren Betts obviously at 6'7", but they've got height in every position. UConn Faithful will stand on their feet until the first bucket. Top of your screen, Aaliyah Edwards. Finds Beckers, pulls up, long distance, back iron, and keeps Key Rice, pulls down the rebound. And it's not often you see people go under a screen for Paige Beckers. Two on the floor for Connecticut. A lot of bodies flying. That one on the inside by Osborne, broken up. Left alone, corner three. That one too strong. So this one will go back to UConn. As we take a look at Corey Close. 13 seasons at UCLA, seven NCAA tournaments, five Sweet 16s. The assistant coach at Florida State as well as UC Santa Barbara. And that time at UCLA as well and has found a home to California native.
UCLA in their man-to-man. -man. I'm very curious to see how they will defend the post, both for Betts and for Edwards. And Dugalich comes down with the defensive rebound, starts to break. KK Arnold couldn't find the look she wanted on the left side. Dugalich trying to find something at the rim, just short on the shot. All right, here's where you get in a huddle and you say Lauren Betts has not touched the ball. Mm. Four shots, I think, have been attempted for UCLA, not a touch for Lauren Betts. You know, R.E.M. at 39 seasons at UCLA, 11 national titles, one of the most decorated coaches you'll find in not just women's basketball, men's basketball across the board. Who has been riddled by injuries in the last two seasons. Tough to see with A.Z. Fudd going out for an ACL injury who has been riddled in her career with injury as well. And we were told that Caroline Descharm is going to be missing this game because of the next spasm. Yeah, and you know, there's nothing you can do about it. You got to play that next woman up mentality. And UConn is so loaded on this roster. And Nika Mule gets a turnover, moved her feet on that one. So as far as the pace, you can tell both teams are amped up about this matchup. It's almost two minutes into this ball game, yet have scored. So a couple of things you want to see from UCLA on this next possession. I want to see a touch inside the paint to Lauren Betts. You've got to run your offense through your post. As we mentioned, Lauren Betts coming in. Three double-doubles on the season already through their first four games. Kiki Rice, a sophomore, was the number two recruit coming in and puts her Bruins on the board first. Well, she is one of the most fun players to watch for me. And she can shoot the ball, she can defend, she directs this team. Just a young sophomore, but had a great freshman season. Aliyah Edwards couldn't connect on the baseline jumper. Here comes Charisma Osborne, the fifth year grad. As Betts, you wanted it and she delivered. Nice wrap around, finished on the left side. I wanted to see what UConn would do when she received the ball. And she did get a quick double from Nico Mule from the corner, but they've got to be careful because UCLA could make them pay from the three point line. Six, seven sophomore Lauren Betts was actually the number one overall recruit coming in. So Corey Close notching the first and second best player in that class. UCLA, they've got the big girl inside, but why not? You go behind the screen, Kiki Rice is gonna make you pay, knocks it down, and then Lauren Betts, one quick step and turn right over the defense of Aaliyah Edwards. UConn still looking to get on the board. Paige Beckers, turn down the three. Corner three by Nika Mule, and that'll be no good in a shot clock violation for the Huskies. And Gina Oriama not pleased with that offensive execution. I don't think that's who you want in that scenario to take that shot. Paige Beckers needs to get the ball in her hands a little bit more. And, and we've seen that now on both sides, right? Need to get Betts to the ball, need to get Paige Beckers. UCLA returning 88% of their scoring from last season. Lauren Beck's a big part of it. And Kiki Rice continues to show people why she is such a great player in her sophomore season. Well, because Lauren Betts takes up so much attention inside, you can't help off of her. And so that leaves the lane open for Rice to go down. Paige Beckers tried a scoop shot on the right, tried to track it down. And we're about four minutes into this ball game with the Huskies, desperate for a shot. UCLA though, no problem at all. You see Aaliyah Edwards solidly defending Lauren Betts inside. That leaves Kiki Rice with just an up and under move to get past her defender for the two. Aubrey Griffin takes the seat as Ice Brady checks in the red shirt freshman from San Diego. Miss last season after dislocating the right kneecap. She'll have the assignment underneath. UCLA will get the reset. Kiki Rice underneath. Rice left alone, top of the key, and I don't know 
much more you can say about how she can score on every level on the court. Well, I'm just confused about the defense. She's already hit a three. Why are you going under the screen? You got to credit UCLA's offensive execution there, rolling into Paige Beckers, who is guarding Kiki Rice. Look, rolls right over Dugalich, holds her off, and Kiki Rice just way too wide open. Pac-12 all-freshman team last year. Has eight points, perfect from the field. Only two players have scored for UCLA. Lauren Beck with the other two. Paige Becker finally putting the Huskies on the board. And the Husky faithful take a sigh of relief and take a seat as well. Over three defenders, by the way, which is no big deal for Paige Beckers. But Kiki Rice not slowing things down at all. Gets all the way to the rim after a made bucket. Kiki Rice just comes at you and waves, but we'll go back to that bucket by Beckers. And look at this, three defenders around her, off balance, falls to the ground. She actually got up pretty gingerly, was limping for a little bit. And you know, and actually will check out, but any anybody limping on this UConn floor and UConn's gonna take it seriously. They have been riddled with injuries, as you've said. Going back to last year, that's all that they heard is injury bug hitting them since the beginning of the season. The National Player of the Year, Paige Beckers, as she came in, actually suffered a season-ending ACL as well as Ice Brady. AZ Bud, who is out now with the ACL, missed 22 games as well as well as Dorka Juhas, who is now in the WNBA. So a team that is just hoping to get past that in this season. So a lot of youth on the floor right now for UConn. And this freshman class has been highly touted. And they are getting the chance to get going early. UCLA, on the other hand, could not have asked for a better start to this game. The step back, Kiki Rice. You go under the screen, she's going to make you pay. But she'll also make you pay inside the paint. Buckets for number one. UCLA is rolling. We talked about the injuries that the Huskies have had over the last two seasons. Well, that doesn't exclude AZ Fudd, the junior guard, who has been riddled with without her within her season. The freshman played 25 games and in sophomore year 15. She was able to play as well. And it's just unfortunate when we have to add another line with under that, under that, knowing that she will miss the remaining portion of this season due to an ACL. And we have known so many players, especially between the two of us, that have come back from injury over and over again. And it is no small feat. So much hard work goes into it. And it's also a mental battle to get through that, right? To, to know you're not out on the floor, but you have to help your team in other ways. And AZ Fudd is a big part of this UConn roster. UConn out of the timeout, knocks down the triple. Much needed points for UConn. Let's see if they can get a stop on the defensive end. No Lauren Bett still, but an offensive foul on UCLA. This is how you want to come out of a timeout. Draw off a play, kick it, and let your freshman go to work. Ashley Shade receives a pass from another freshman, knocking it down. Had 10 points in her 16 minutes off the bench in their win over Maryland. Their lone loss of the season came to NC State. Sanaya Rivers went off the unranked Wolfpack. So back-to-back -back buckets out of the timeout for the Huskies as Aaliyah Edwards now on the board. Yeah, Aaliyah Edwards needs to have the ball in her hands. Right now, UConn looks out of sync. They're losing. They've lost Paige Beckers for the moment, right? She's in the on the timeline, getting ready to check in. But they don't know where their scoring is going to come from. Near a block on the take. So Gabriella Hawkes is going to be able to take two free throws. But going back to this bucket by Edwards. Yeah, Iwala was in good position, but Aaliyah Edwards just elevates above her. And then UCLA, Hawkes goes in, and Edwards with the rejection. It was special to see both Hawkes at for the men's team last year, the reigning Pac-12 Player of the Year. 
playing for UCLA as well. Actually playing for the Miami Heat this season. It's a basketball family. Yeah, Can you absolutely. imagine what those driveway basketball sessions look like between sister and brother? I'm pretty sure that Jaime Jaquez will say <laughs> that his sister is a bit better. <laughs> as he should. Edwards, power dribble to the right, draws a foul against Betts. And that is where she needs to take advantage. Pull Lauren Betts out to the free throw line and make her defend you. The kick to the top. And then Edwards uses her speed to get to the rim and foul on Lauren Betts. We saw this in the game prior, Virginia Tech versus Kansas. Jackson got in early foul trouble and played just a few minutes of that first half and it changed the trajectory of that game. Leah Edwards at the line. It's four for seven from the free throw line coming into this tournament. Average, well actually 77% from the free throw line and averaging 18 points. This is a player that knows she's gonna draw a lot of attention. Trying to finish at the free throw line. Kiki Rice with the fake to the left and another triple from the same spot on the floor. Wow. KK Arnold has struggled trying to get a nice look at the rim. It's been contested on both attempts. UCLA, really good on-ball defense on the perimeter. Hawkes going at KK Arnold is able to draw the foul. And Hawkes may have a little bit of an advantage in height over KK Arnold standing at 5'9". And here's the missed shot, the foul by Hawkes inside, a lot of contact. Corey Close cannot say enough good things about Jaquez and the way that she has expanded her game. She put in so much work in the offseason on her shot, on her physical fitness, put some muscle on, and it is paying off. This team is a young, loaded group. When you're looking at her walking away as co-MVP with Kiki Rice, during the McDonald's <laughs> All-American game. And, and it just keeps coming, too. She just signed an incredible class. In fact, Lauren Betts' sister has committed to playing for UCLA. Not as tall as Lauren, but equally as dominant. Okay, is able to pull down the rebound. Right now, it's just the force on the inside as UCLA continues to build on this lead, now up 11. Edwards can't respond, and it's been one and done for the Huskies. Yeah, UCLA just has had the advantage in every way. The kick pack, Dukali. Oh my goodness. Dukali knocks down the triple from the top of the key. Back to back threes from the Bruins, and that'll lead to a timeout for the Huskies. Huskies, a minute and 52 seconds left, and the Bruins have this 22 to 8 lead. You saw it coming. Kiki Rice in the paint, turns and just dishes it to Dugalic. You felt like it was going in as soon as it left her hand. UCLA came in here with the right game plan. They have matched the energy that they have, that they expect of themselves and they are up big time in this one, 22 to eight early on. Oh. As you can look on the left side of your screen, this is the summary for UCLA coming into this one. As we said, the only un beaten team in this field, right now ranked second in the NCAA, Rima Osborne with over 1,800 points, sixth in UCLA scoring, has honestly been that player for her, the leadership that she's brought within her tenure. Can't speak highly enough of it as Paige Beckers once again out of the timeout. 
UCF or the Huskies able to respond? You see a quick substitution coming by Corey Close. She did not like the defense that she saw from her team. And you love seeing that, a commitment to excellence. And London Jones will take a seat. Was not there in the face. That, that's on the scouting report, right? Yeah. Paige Betters gets no light because that will happen. Fifth yard, fifth year guard Cameron Brown checks in for the Bruins. We see Caden Samuels as well on the floor for the Huskies. Second chance opportunities. That was different before the timeout. Yeah. How the Huskies can get on the glass. And they need to attack the rim. Ice Brady now coming in, and she gives them some size as Aaliyah Edwards takes a break. A lot of contact on the floor. It looks like a foul that will go against Jaquez. We'll stay with the Huskies as we're in the final minute of play of the first period. Well, that's also a part of, of Jaquez's game that Corey Close loves, is her willingness to use her body, dive on the floor. She said, if our team played with the kind of heart that Jaquez does, we would be at our potential right now, even in this early season. She gives her heart and soul every time she's on the floor. Another substitution for the Bruins as Lena Zontok will check in. UCLA has not been shy about going to their bench early and often. They have had a very continual substitution pattern, which I, I love that you get people the, the rest that they need. And it really just shows you the depth of this UCLA team. Mika Mule splits at the free throw line. Charisma Osborne has yet to score in this game. I'd love to see a set run for her. There's the pin down and the bucket. We saw Santa Claus sitting in the crowd earlier today, and I feel like you're the one to actually ask as she knocks down the triple from outside. Paige Beckers with the step back, no good. And here come the Bruins. Osborne, 20 seconds left on the game clock. That's asking for the ball underneath. Brown will retreat. Nine seconds left. Corner three. And that goes down. Another triple for the Bruins. That's their fifth on the night. And they're shooting 74% from distance. 28 points in a quarter against the Yukon Huskies. UCLA came to play. They're deep, they're a powerhouse, they have defended, they have rebounded, and UConn can't guard them. A three from long distance for Osborne, and as the time ticks away, nobody guarding from the corner, and a three to fall for Cameron Brown. The Bruins have the 16-point lead heading into the second quarter, so this would be a great time to revisit the series history. As you can see, UConn leads the all-time series seven to zip. And this is the second top 10 matchup they've had. We also mentioned the last matchup coming back in 2021 when they just lost by 10 and UCLA trying to change the narrative this go round for the inaugural. Cayman Island Classic. Well, I asked Corey Close. She's had a lot of good teams in her 13 years at UCLA. And obviously she did at Florida State as well under Sue Semerow, you being a part of many of those teams, Angel Gray. <laughs> but I asked her if this was her most talented team and she said yes. She yeah. said this has the most potential and, and this is what we're seeing. Number two team in the country, are you kidding me? Making it look easy against the Huskies. Karima, Charisma Osborne is shooting over 54% from the three-point line. No hesitancy, drains that one to take the lead 31 to 12. Outside, no good as Lauren Betts is able to streak in for the rebound. And that's not the shot you want from the freshman after you've just been scored on. And then you don't pick up on defense. Paige Beckers, gonna have to put her foot on the gas. She sends this one out, in and out three. 
took her time, laced it up, screens it from the top of the key. Paige Beckers. As long as she is on the floor, there is hope for the comeback for, U for UConn. She has eight of their 15 points. Dish on the inside to Betts, and I just don't know if there's an answer for her on the inside. You know, the only thing that they could do is just have a lot more ball pressure and make it more difficult to get the ball to her because once it's in her hands, as I mentioned earlier, 78% from the field, I mean, that, that shot's going in. Page, one at the three, has a tip guarded by Charisma Osborne, able to put it off the floor and draws the foul. Paige Becker is just willing herself to get to the basket. You saw her hit the three early on. Got to have better defense on number five. And then on the other side, the high-low look. Lauren Betts takes just a second to adjust herself and goes up with the easy two. So Paige Becker will go up to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Shooting around 80% from the free throw line on the season. And the 2021 Player of the Year. Just good to see her back on the floor with the Huskies. We know the recovery. She was very transparent about what it took for her to get back to being healthy. And you see it, her thumb is wrapped as well and Charisma Osborne on the sideline. UCLA with the turnover. Talked about the Bruins being the only undefeated team in this field. Well, they had a scare against Princeton just on last Friday. Escaped that one by three. We talked about the parity in women's basketball, and we've seen it from the start to this point. With the number one team going down to kickstart things for LSU. Travel at the top of the key for Paige Beckers, and that will be the third turnover for the Huskies. And then UCLA followed, or excuse me, UConn followed that up by losing to NC State, who was unranked at the time. So it's all over the board. And then even that close win that UCLA had to Princeton, they turned around and Princeton beat ranked Oklahoma. Yep. So, I mean, they didn't barely beat a, a bad team. Princeton is phenomenal. Jones outside, Lauren Betts able to track down the rebound. Kiki Rice, after it was tipped, tried to find some space on the inside. Another one from outside for Osborne. And it seems like the sense of urgency for the Bruins, they really want that next bucket. Yep. I looked at the shot clock as soon as Osborne took it because I assumed by the way she just flung it that the time clock was ticking down, but it wasn't, 10 seconds left. I think you need to settle yourself. Paige Becker's in and out. She's now two for four from long range. Poked out of bounds by the Huskies, so UCLA will get it back. And UCLA always looking to stay on the run, and that's led by Kiki Rice, who will now exit the game and give herself a much needed breather. Yeah, Gabriela Jaquez will check back in. Hawkes had a 30-point game against Bellamine. And Lauren Betts tied up underneath. Jump ball going to the Huskies. That's how you guard 6-7. You wait until she makes the crucial mistake of a post player by bringing the ball down. Gets the tie-up UConn ball. Couple of subs will be at the table for UCLA on the next break. Osborne, close to a takeaway there. Edwards takes the dribble on the inside. And you can see Betts really playing off of her at the top of the key too, baiting Edwards to take that shot. Mika Mule almost had a three go down, but an offensive foul will be called against UConn. Amari DeBerry will be called for the offensive foul. So 
they're actually going to review the play, and as they step aside, we'll do the same. We'll be back right at the break. We're trying to see if it was going to be upgraded at any point, but I think it's just a common foul here. The basket also does not count. Maybe that was something that they were looking at as well. But they do say that's waved off, and UCLA will get the ball back. And I think UConn right now with a much needed timeout. They need to regroup. They are, it seems, without direction out on the floor. Paige Beckers is doing her thing, but you cannot count on one player to get you into this game right now. And they've got a lot of youth on the floor, which, you know, a lot has been talked about but by these freshmen and and how talented they are but you got to play as a team and you got to start running your sets they run the princeton offense and you need to do a little bit better running off the screen some better read and react situations connecticut struggling from the field shooting 22 percent Paige beckers has three of their five field goals jones mishandles it on our attempt at the rim, so that will be a turnover and the fifth for the Bruins. Amari DeBerry checks out. London Jones has the difficult task of defending in the full court. And I'll tell you what, I don't want number three guarding me when I'm bringing the ball up the court. She is so fast, so quick. She just makes turnovers happen. Becker's off glass, a bit strong, a rebound right away. And that might be the boost they need is Aubrey Griffin for the second chance points. Yeah, UConn has not been attacking the offensive glass and they capitalize off a UCLA turnover and get a bucket of their own. Foul on the Bruins as Aubrey Griffin checks in the ball game for UConn and has really brought that spark on the inside. Yeah, and on the other side, Iwala, who's exiting the game. I, you know what? I know she picked up the foul, but to see the big girl take the ball with authority, turn and try to score, that is the quintessential post move that I love. Back to the basket, true old school post player. Is that your game? Yeah, too? well, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it. Osborne still with the matchup on Paige Beckers, who continues to light it up from the field. Paige Beckers now with 12 points. Kiki Rice also with 12. The only two players in double figures in this one. Betts sees the double team. Dugalich missed at the rim, and another offensive foul will be called on UCLA. This one going against Hawkins. Up until that point, I've been so impressed with UCLA in that offensive set making great cuts, finding the open people. Jaquez trying to seal off Aaliyah Edwards. Definitely moves, definitely gets a foul. So U UConn was down as many as 19 points. It is now a 12 point ball game because UCLA is in a bit of a scoring drought as another, another bucket at the rim. A shot attempt at the rim, can't fall. Kiki Rice with the Euro step. Dugalich, top of the key, and they've gone a bit cold from outside as the Bruins have missed their last four threes. And that's where, I'm gonna say it again, I don't mind the three-point shots, but go inside out. Just get Lauren Betts a touch. She will kick it out to you. She is drawing a double every time, and she made a great pass to the diving Dugalich on the last possession. Bruins 0 for their last eight shot attempts, 0 for 9, and a foul on the weak side by Paige Beckers. Trying anything to prevent Betts from getting a look at the rim. Yeah, too many moves right there for Lauren Betts. She caught it wide open, 
defenses behind her, turn and score. Instead, she takes an up and under move and actually allows the defense, that's her shot right there with the left hand, the left handed hook. Instead, elects to go to the right. She'll still get to the foul line. Lauren Betts, the standout. Actually coming off a game where she had 22 and 10 in 25 minutes. Knocks down the free throws. And the Stanford transfer finding her place at UCLA. And Corey Close was even very open about saying, this is earlier than I thought that she'd ha actually be this kind of standout. Kiki Rice looking a little more like the first quarter that we saw turnover into offense. Directing traffic. So that's a matchup everyone wants to see if Kiki Rice is on Paige Beckers, gets the bucket to go. And Paige has been the one woman show for the Huskies. She has 14 points, well over half of what they have on the board right now. Yeah, Kiki Rice gets that run out off of a steal and then Paige Beckers, I said earlier, can she do it by herself? I don't think she should, but you know what? Maybe she will. <laughs> 14 points. For Beckers. So they get the ball back because of the foul on the floor. The basket, they say, will count. Get another look at it. Take on the inside and a four point swing on that possession for the Huskies. That will lead to a Bruins timeout and Corey Close not pleased with what she's seen from her team defensively in those last few series. They're gonna have to go back to the game clock as a couple of ticks are going off the game clock right now. How about after that timeout was called? How about Aubrey Griffin and what she has done off the bench for the UConn Huskies? First of all, Paige Beckers uses the screen and then finds Griffin in the corner who uses her speed to get to the bucket. She's had a couple great plays that have gotten some energy back to this UConn Husky lineup. So right now they're looking at the clock and I notice on the game clock about three seconds that came off after the timeout was called. So we'll see what they'll reset it to. Let's get back to why the timeout was called for UCLA. The back-to-back -back buckets for the Huskies. You asked for what the burst was going to be. We knew what we were getting out of Paige Beckers, who has 14 points right now. But also, Aubrey Griffin, adding herself on both ends of the floor, the defense we're seeing, but also her really finding ways to get to the rim on the other end. And that's what oftentimes can be the silver lining in an injury. Obviously, AZ Fudd not able to be with the team on the court this year. Caroline Ducharme not going to play today because of neck spasm. She will play eventually, of course. That's the hope. But now other players are stepping up. We've seen a lot of the freshmen on the court as well. But this time, the grad, Aubrey Griffin, is really making herself known and doing some good things for the Huskies. Last year, the Huskies had 17 different starting lineups and had to postpone six games because they didn't have enough healthy players. They're trying to avoid that by any means necessary on this season, but in the last few possessions, as you can see, Gino R.E.M. on the bench with his staff, now down 12 points. As we mentioned the biggest lead for UCLA, 19. Trying to work their way back into this one with 3.18 left in the half. And Coach Oriyama elects not to put Paige Beckers in as UConn is in a zone coming out of the timeout and gets turnover off of it. And dare I say once again, Aubrey Griffin. Right. Using your minutes wisely. Wanted to touch underneath, but she was triple teamed. Just has one field goal on the night. Sitting at three points for Aaliyah Edwards. Dugalich had a 
really hard hit against Aaliyah Edwards trying to cut to the basket and she took a hard fall. And again, just the silence that you see from the UConn side. They don't like any of their players falling to the ground, especially when you think of what has been going on the last few years and a hard hit by Dugalich. No intended harm, but hits hard and, and uh, Leah Edwards, the recipient. So they'll go back to the monitor. We saw this earlier in the game to see if it was excessive and will be upgraded at all. But no doubt the momentum in this ball game has shifted yeah. to the Huskies. Yeah, it's like a pin was put inside the balloon of UCLA and that pin was in the number of Paige Beckers, 14 points for number five, and she has destroyed what UCLA thought that they had early in this one. I mean, they still have the lead, but momentum definitely feels shifted. There's a bit of a shift uh, from UCLA shooting 60% from the field in the first quarter and now just shooting 30% in the second. And I think right now they are, the officials have called a foul on somebody that was not in the game. So Corey Close made sure that the book got it right, and they do. So during that time, London Jones was able to check in for the Bruins. And Paige Becker is back in as well for UConn. Got the break she needed thanks to the media timeout. Paige Beckers has already played 15 minutes in this one. Aubie Griffin has been the spark and the answer in the Batman and Robin <laughs> show for Paige Beckers. <laughs> she came to play, found her opportunity, and she's taking full advantage. Wow, another steal by Aubrey Griffin. Coast to coast bucket. And the UConn faithful are on their feet. Aubrey Griffin. Already with nine points. The response on the other end. No good as Osborne turns down the three, short on the shot. Third attempt for Brown, and that's off the rim. And you couldn't get better looks than that for UCLA. And that is just the way that this quarter has gone. The steal by Aubrey Griffin turns into a bucket. We have said her name quite a few times, and it's just the first half. But she has been so impressive. The second leading scorer behind Paige Beckers with nine points. She's four of five from the field and three steals to go along with it. She only had one point in their win over Minnesota. And you can attest to this. When your number is called, how are you going to step up? Yep. A couple of players missing due to injury. And Abby Griffin able to step in. Huge so far for the surge, where it's just a five-point ball game. And Gina Wariema was looking, right? We saw so many different players coming off that bench, just hoping that somebody would step up like Griffin. UConn is on a 11-0 run, and the Bruins looking for their bucket in the first one in the last three minutes. I think every time Lauren Betts kicks the ball out when she's in the low post, UConn breathes a sigh of relief. being down 19 in the first quarter. Starting to feel like a home game for the Huskies. 14-0 run by the Huskies. Kiki Rice finds Betts. 
underneath and a much needed bucket for UCLA. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why would Lauren Betts ever kick the ball out if she had a look where she could just turn and score? UConn wants her to do that. They want her to kick it out. That's exactly what Betts needs to do every single time she touches it deep inside the lane. High screen by Edwards. Paige Beckers once again. Second attempt, no good. 1.6 left on the game clock. It will stay with the Huskies. No surprise, Paige, Paige Beckers leading the group in that huddle, but Paige Beckers has done everything that she could do to get into this lead and one more attempt, it's a no-go for UConn. So Aubrey Griffin had a good look at the rim, but just fell short to make this once again a one possession game, but it's been, even with the Bruins, with the lead going into half, Paige Beckers with 18 points at the half. And forcing UCLA into nine turnovers early in this one. They've capitalized 10 points off those turnovers. It was a tale of two quarters. UCLA got going early. They went inside. Kiki Rice was so impressive in this one. Coach Oriema is saying, come on, will somebody help me out? You know who helped him out? His all-star, Paige Beckers. She was phenomenal in this sex first half, 18 points. 6 to 12 shooting, perfect from the free throw line. UConn left that half on a 13 to 2 run. And if you're Corey Close, you're saying, wake up. We got a game to play. UConn coming to play. And we have a good one on our hands here in the Cayman Islands. Hey, this game is so good, Kelly, that the Pirates are on their way in as well to check this one out. <laughs> what a comeback so far for the Huskies that ended the half on a 13-2 run. UCLA started off hot, Osborne, and the Bruins really got things going from deep. Yeah, Kiki Rice was so impressive in that first half. She's the leading scorer for the Bruins, 14 points for her to go along with three assists and a steal, but she has been everything they needed early on in this one and was tough to, de to defend too. Paige Beckers was on her and kept going underneath the screen and she would make her pay. I'll tell you what, Paige Beckers is making UCLA pay. She has single-handedly cut into this lead that UCLA had and she has gone and just lit it up. 18 points in the first half. She's done that in 18 minutes of play. Perfect from the foul line, hit a couple threes. She's willing that shot to go down. Shooting 50% from the field. Too Kelly, and you're looking at like who's gonna be that spark. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the half that Albie Griffin also had within that when her number was called. She yeah. was able to step up on the defensive end and really on the offensive end as well. Yeah, and you look at the stats there, U UConn forced UCLA into those nine turnovers and I thought that was going to be a different story especially with the way that we saw UCLA really locked down defensively early on in this game but that's why the game of basketball is 40 minutes long because there's a whole lot more to be played second half happening right now and with Caroline Ducharme out into next spasms KK Arnold got her first career start this in the Big East freshman of the week as well as that's denied in the paint. And by who, none other than Aubrey Griffin. Gets the start coming into the second half, why not? And that's what Paige Beckers does better maybe than anybody in women's basketball is she reads her defender and she can cut back door. You overplay even for a second on Beckers and she'll make you pay on the back door. Dougalich couldn't respond with the bucket on the other end. Now she came down with the rebound. Osborne to Jones. Jones for the triple, just left. Let's go back to the comparison of the first two quarters as well because we talked about the hot start for the Bruins. They shot 60% from the field, nine of 15, hit five threes in that as well, shooting 71%. And it has been a complete contrast in the second, 26% from the field and only one triple since then. And you know, UCLA just came out with a great game plan and they set the tempo. That it was all Kiki Rice, you see her right now, off the rebound, almost loses it. 
Outside, Osborne left alone. Triple, a much needed bucket for the Bruins. And great kick out by Dugalich. I thought she'd turn around and try to score that, but saw Osborne wide open. And that's your shooter, get her the ball. This is the fourth ranked matchup between the two teams. And this is the first time where UCLA is actually ranked higher than UConn. Nika Mule couldn't respond with another triple. Kiki Rice fakes towards the baseline, trying to get to the other side. That's popped out. Rice, top of the key. Back-to-back -back threes for the Bruins. So a little run it back like UCLA had in the first quarter. Getting hot from outside. We'll see if that can turn into more points for the Bruins. Aliyah Edwards. Then line it up from outside. Osborne just forcing the situation and ill-advised turnover there. The 10th for the Bruins. And a missed opportunity at the rim for the Huskies. A frenetic pace to the start of this third quarter. The kick out to Rice, nobody's on her. We've seen that in this game. Rice has had open looks at the basket from the three-point line, inside. She's not been defended as well as she deserves, given her potential. Angela Dugalich will check out for the Bruins as Gabriela Jaquez will check in. Aubrey Griffin with the quarter in the game that she's having at this point. Thought she was going to let that fly as Edwards. Able to track that one down. Rice, Beckers, loses her on the screen. Full court play for Kiki Rice, gets the end one. And a poor communication by UConn on who gets back any time that somebody puts up a shot, um, the immediate thought is who's going to get back in transition defense. Paige Beckers goes in, go for the offensive rebound. Nobody is back to protect the rim, and Kiki Rice takes advantage and one gets a shot at the line. Ashlyn Shade will check in for Paige Beckers, who has really been the anchor for the Huskies, finished with 18 points and a half, has yet to score in the second half though. And a displacement by Aaliyah Edwards will give it back to the Bruins. You know Ariema is not happy. It looks like the officials are gonna go to the monitor. So Leah Edwards picks up her second foul and the officials will go back to the monitor to see if this will be upgraded. We'll have a call after the break. So Joseph Basile, Tony Patillo, and Tyler Trimble on the call. We haven't been told what the official call has been after that replay, but they went to the monitor to see if Aaliyah Edwards in this play right here was going to be upgraded. It was her second foul. Can I just talk as a post player? I, I hate that for her post because yeah. you, she's standing, what, six, eight inches above Charisma Osborne, and you are taught to catch the ball, elbows out, and turn. I mean, it is, it is within, I guess you can't have your elbows wide out, but it's what you do as a post player, and often times guards get in the way, right? I mean, they don't mean to. I know they're, they're trying to do their job, but so I, I know that the foul goes to Aaliyah Edwards. I definitely do not believe that an upgrade is necessary. So you look to see if it's excessive, if it's a basketball move. I don't need to tell you 
Yep, we got, yeah, we got it. Yep. Yeah, so what we were just told by the officials, this is a basketball play, just yep. like your, the ruling that you were saying. Yes. Yeah, and I get that they have to call a foul because contact is made, um, but, I, I, you know, I, I just feel bad for the post player. You can't fault the, yeah. the player that has a couple of inches That's on right. another. <laughs> That's right. The wraparound play, Osborne. Couldn't finish underneath, and Betts actually gets the rebound. It'll be a tie-up, but that's another player. Lauren Betts has only attempted five field goals in this in this game. Yeah, I think that has to change, and, and I have backed off from saying too much about it because I think I, I'm over-talking it, but when you have 6-7, and, and you have to know what the defense is thinking. They're thinking, oh, how do we stop this scorer? And you know what? It really doesn't matter when you've got scores like that. Amazing drive and finish by KK Arnold, the freshman. Such a talented freshman coming in with a highly touted freshman class. Number six ranked recruit gets to the bucket, drops the foul, and the response. I love it. The number six recruit coming out of high school. Had 12 points against Maryland last week. Had five steals as well. And that's the thing that I like most about her game, is how she can put both sides of the floor together. And that's earned her her first start with Gino Ariema and the Huskies tonight. Good hustle by Nika Mule. That's something we haven't really seen, is UConn trying to anticipate the passing lanes, trying to get stops on the defensive end by doing that. Obviously, they want stops, but they haven't been as aggressive. Dugalich back door, couldn't connect with Osborne. And that's going to be something that Corey Close is not going to be too thrilled about. I can speak from experience, the 11 turnovers <laughs> as she goes to her bench to make some substitutions. And you've got to think, with the momentum feeling like it's starting to turn toward UConn, how long can Coach Gino Oriyama keep Paige Beckers on the sideline? Yeah. Paige Beckers has two fouls, but actually leading the team in points with 18. Kiki Rice able to snatch that one out of the air. How about 6-7 running the floor? I see you, post player. We'll see if she'll be rewarded on the other end. Nine point lead for the Bruins. Osborne, corner three, triple, knocked down. Back to a double digit lead for the Bruins. Great patience on the offensive end for UCLA. They let the play develop, found the open look in the corner. 7-3 so far go down for UCLA. That one pulled down. Angela Dugalich and Kiki Rice just misses the layup on the right side. Edwards streaking to the basket, couldn't finish out of the outstretched hands of Lauren Betts and Kiki Rice on the left side, on the left side gets that one to go. How about the pace? Both teams running in transition back to back. And now Paige Beckers comes to the timeline. Isn't this more of the pace that we saw from UCLA in the first quarter, really pushing things out? Every opportunity that they had, they would run with it. Kiki Rice wanted the ball in her hands, Charisma Osborne to start that break, and they were getting buckets. UCLA outscoring UConn 12 to three in this quarter. Well, UCLA had gone cold for a little bit, but Rice finding Osborne in the corner for the triple. UCLA not going away. Before that timeout, UCLA on a 5-0 run, but Paige Beckers checked back into the ball game. She has 18 points. She has not scored in the half. And she has been their leading scorer throughout this ball game. So Good to see her back on the floor. We'll see what she'll be able to take care of. But when you're looking at her resume, just a player that is so talented, so gifted, and the Huskies, happy to see her back on the floor. Yeah, back in 2021, the National Player of the Year. And then, of course, missed last year. She is 
the obvious choice for preseason Big East Player of the Year, but you see the numbers there. Hadn't played a game in 584 days. It doesn't look like she's missed anything. Coach Gino Arayama told us early on she's back and better than ever, and we can attest to that, Angel. I mean, when you saw her play before she went down, you're like, she's back and better than ever? <laughs> Uh-oh, how? <laughs> A little bit of hot potato on the left side for the Bruins. Betts sends this out to Jaquez. In and out three, Brown with the rebound. Osborne, left wing, triple goes down in the second chance opportunity. Looks good for the Bruins. That's Osborne's fifth three-point make. So UCLA, with one for six from outside in the second quarter, now three for five from distance in the third. And the missed shot, UCLA trying to get in on the break, and there is the pass I've been waiting for. Lauren Metz gets the foul and the bucket. It cannot get any easier than that in the game of basketball. Well, Kelly, I'll even go back to this. Just an assignment where UConn didn't bring two bodies to her on the block that time as well, taking advantage of that. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's why she's so deadly. You've got to bring double, triple coverage. She has seen it all season long. Even Corey Close alluded to that in a press conference that, you know, she didn't think that she would be such a focal point for other people's defense. But, but they are, they are literally putting their scouting report around 51 for UCLA, trying to figure out how to stop her. Betts now with 11 points and six rebounds coming into this ball game. She has scored over 14 points in every game this season. And remember she played behind Cameron Brink at Stanford. An excellent post player, got to play against her every single day in practice. And she got to play, obviously, at Stanford just with limited minutes because of the presence of Brink. But I'll tell you what, she is having an incredible sophomore season in this system under Corey Close and with these teammates who Corey Close tells me her team is so close, so tight, and they have so much fun together on and off the floor. Biggest lead for UCLA at 20. Kiki Rice didn't like the look on the inside to Iwala. Sends it back up to Osborne. Hesitated for a shot clock. Dish on the inside, tap out, and Iwala actually got a hand on it. Yeah, Iwala has to be careful. Last time she attempted that shot and went for her own miss, she got a, a foul called on her. I love the effort. Just got to make sure your hands are safe. Kiki Rice pulls up and... Continues to build on this Bruin lead. What a threat. Both sides of the ball. UCLA shooting 53% in this quarter and 60% from distance. In this frame as well as Aubrey Griffin drives baseline and is able to draw the foul. Kiki Rice, the daughter of two athletes from Yale. Dad played basketball, mom played tennis. Daughter, balling right now. And in attendance as well, behind the scores table. Excited for what their daughter has been able to do within her career. The first high school or actual collegiate Jordan brand signee. What a great opportunity for these young players to get in on these NIL deals. And you got to think with her representation in Los Angeles, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the capital of entertainment itself. And she has been entertaining tonight. How fun is it going to see that UCLA-USC matchup? That's right. With Juju, Juju that's right. She has been so good. And those two freshmen, or excuse me, Kiki Rice, the sophomore, but battling each other. It's going to be so much fun. How did Hawkins get that one off the glass? Great finish by Hawkins inside the paint. Yeah. 
UConn only has four points in this quarter, and there's a minute and 37 seconds left. So it's the reset. They were able to make their way back into the game, only down one possession at half. What needs to happen right now for UConn to get that spark back? Well, first of all, Paige Beckers is on the floor. So what she did in the first half, she single-handedly got herself into position where she could score. And so she's running off screen. She's in the read and react offense where she can make cuts. If you overplay Paige, she's going to go back door and get the ball. But I, I think you don't want to say that one person can do it. But when you're talking about Paige Beckers, I, I feel like it's okay. <laughs> You've got Aaliyah Edwards inside to clean up if she misses a shot. Aubrey Griffin, who has been just a spark off the bench that UConn's needed. I think Aaliyah Edwards, the player that you highlighted, coming into this game as well. Just one for 11 from the field and has the most minutes played for the Huskies at this point with 25. You wonder if that is in large part due to the defense of 6'7", Lauren Betts. Kiki Rice held up in the paint. You can see how they're trying to pack it in on the inside. And with that, will be a three-second violation for Lauren Betts. She was like, I am open, and I am going to stay here as long as I need to let you see that. <laughs> because she was wide open. But, you know, credit UConn because it was great ball pressure. That pass was going to be difficult to get there. Paige Becker's a lot of contact off the screen in Osborne. Having a conversation with the officials as she'll pick up another foul. And that time, trying to run her off the screen to get her a look. And you see the crew coming immediately out. Wow, has this Cayman Islands crew been on top of it? Wow. On top of it. Yep. Got our man Bond <laughs> coming out to make sure that the ladies are safe on the floor. Less than a minute to play here in the third quarter and the Huskies are in the bonus. Nika Mule will check in after the free throw. And will come in for Paige Becker. Nika Mule, just one point in this game, only two shot attempts. And I know she is not a big volume shooter, only averages a seven points a game. She is known for the way she distributes, but I think she can, I think that they can look for her to get some buckets, especially while Paige is on the, on the bench. Or generate some offense, because you mentioned known for her assists, averaging about five assists as a travel is called on Lauren Betts underneath. Now that time, UConn was able to bring three bodies. Yep. But going back to Nika Mule, this is a player that set school records in assists in a season and has yet to have an assist in this ball game. Yeah, you can't have that from the point guard position. And maybe that's indicative of what's been happening in the demise of UConn right now because they are just struggling to get points on the board because they're not playing team basketball. Four assists on 13 made field goals. And let's be fair, those field goals actually have come from Paige Beckers, who has six of them. One left. Full court heave, no good from KK Arnold as three frames down. And the Bruins have a 19 point lead heading in to the last 10 minutes of play. Well, we've said her name a lot in this game. Kiki Rice, 22 points for the sophomore phenom. The step back, the bucket, eight rebounds, five assists to go along with that stat line. What an impressive performance. Well, UCLA outscoring UConn 22 to eight in the third quarter. Right now have a 19 point lead going into the fourth quarter and Charisma Osborne has been a huge piece of that. The fifth year guard has been lighting it up from outside. 
She's the leading scorer for this UCLA team, and she's got five field goals made, and they are all from the three-point line. Her teammates helping her out, the inside-outside look. She has been open, though, strangely open. When you've got Charisma Osborne on the floor, that's a player that's circled on the scouting report. You cannot give her space. She has been knocking him down and making UConn pay. Yeah, tied Naira Fields for fifth. They're just past Naira Fields for fifth on UCLA's all-time points list. Coming into this ball game, you already talked about her knocking down the five triples. It was a big question if she was going to be able to come back after they were upset, too. And didn't have the finish that they wanted in the NCAA tournament. We have a feeling things could look different this season. I mean, this is a Final Four team. You see their size. You see their inside-outside game. I would not be surprised if we were watching even these two teams, right? I mean, potentially play late in March. Bruins lost to South Carolina in the Sweet 16, 59 to 43 and have a group that is very cohesive to come back as UConn put some points on the board. Yeah, finally Nika Mule with her first field goal of the game and now trying to turn that into some defense, but Kiki Rice splits that double with ease and Dugalich wow. almost makes him pay. All but down. Edwards, double team, stripped. Kiki Rice. Not sure how Brown was able to come out of this one. Still, no one has a handle on it. And finally, <laughs> poked up to Kiki Rice. Kiki, in and out, and what a series. <laughs> Four bodies, at least, on the floor diving for the ball. I love the effort. Somehow UCLA comes out of that without a bucket and see if UConn can take advantage. I mean, transition defense has got to be better. At this point, I'd almost not go for the offensive rebound if I'm UConn. Your, your trans transition defense is killing you right now, the way UCLA has been able to put points on the board in the break. Seven fast break points now for UCLA, but how about Osborne? Six triples. UCLA has 10. Well, we just showed you a package of five Osborne triples. How about make it six? Quick pass out to the wing, and she makes that look very easy. Getting a much needed breather is Charisma Osborne. Charisma Osborne coming into this game was 14 for 26 on threes, shooting 54%. There's no hesitation. She led her team in points, rebounds, and steals last year. The rebound off the miss free throw from Griffin. Corner three. And that's going to be back iron by Ice Brady. UConn will get it back on the baseline. Paige Beckers checked out with a minute left in the third quarter. We'll check back in, and you almost think, how long does she have to stay to finish this one out? And she has not been walking without pain, it seems. She has gotten on the floor many times during this game. Looks like she tweaked something early on. Wow. That goes on the highlight reel. I see you freshman, KK Arnold, taking it all the way to the rack. KK Arnold just continues to show us why she got the nod for the starting position, in and out, finish at the rim, gathers herself, not just throwing it up off the glass and has an opportunity to complete the three-point play and does. 
and the hesitation at the free throw line. That, that's a senior move. That's an elite move. Had eight triple doubles in high school. Yeah, I said that. Eight. <laughs> well, she's going to be fun to watch. They much needed for the Huskies. They're down a couple of players due to injury. Osborne blocked at the rim. That one by Ice Brady. Here come the Huskies. Aaliyah Edwards streaking to the rim. That one sent out. And a offensive foul is going to go against the Huskies. A missed opportunity at the rim for Aaliyah Edwards. Yeah, I'm very surprised she passed that one out. And I know right now you need points, but Aaliyah Edwards was open for the look. The block, it all starts there. And then in the hands of Paige Becker, as she gets the ball where it needs to go. And I thought that was a layup right there yeah. for Edwards. Still one for 11 from the field. Aaliyah Edwards, a senior. You ask who's going to take on this culture that's already been established with UConn. That this is not what we do. And going up against a top 10 program, you would think that you would see a little bit more fire yes. out of Edwards. Yes. That dig deep mentality that you see from players who know a thing or two about being in a UConn uniform and a nice three by Lena Sontag. Mika Buell responding with the triple. And UConn has been applying some three-quarter court pressure, trying to just slow down this UCLA attack. You've only seen threes. Wow, the extra effort by Edwards. Paige Becker spots up left and knocks it down. 13-point game. How about this? Beckers gets on the floor, and she causes UConn to go on somewhat of a run right now. Defense turning into offense, getting the last bucket. I wondered if UCLA had a big enough lead, but anytime Paige Beckers is on the floor, I'm not sure. The hustle by the post player, Edwards. I know she's not scoring, but that's a great defensive effort. And then kick out to Paige Beckers for the three. And UConn has gotten the momentum back and they will need it for the last five and a, and a half minutes of this fourth quarter. Corey Close called another timeout to make sure that her Bruins were on the same page trying to get the ball inbound. But back-to-back -back threes for the Huskies. And when Paige Beckers is on the floor, there's always a chance for a comeback. Yeah, you can't count the Huskies out. And by the way, I know right now that Corey Close is missing the efforts of her offensive coordinator, Tony Noonan, who could not travel with the team. He stayed back to help his mother who had an illness and, and wanted to take care of her as he should. And so I know she said, you know, we miss him. We, of course, love that he is doing what he's doing, but his presence will be missed. And I know she wants that in the huddle right now. Absolutely, as they are holding on to this 13 point lead, 541 left in this ball game. Kelly, we talked about was their lead big enough? And the answer is a resounding no. no. Up 23 points, biggest lead in the third quarter with a minute and 39 left, 61 to 38. And the Huskies have gone on a run with Paige Beckers checking back into the ball game and a flurry of threes in the last few possessions. An overload on the left side of the floor as they balance things out. Bex pushed all the way out, asking where she wants Osborne. And tapped away by Aaliyah Edwards. Paige Becker sends it right back. Great heads up play as they're now down 11. Yeah, it starts on the defensive end. Aaliyah Edwards 
may be a post player, but she can guard on the perimeter as well as any of those guards on the floor. And she comes in with the double, gets the steal. Almost another one there on Kiki Rice, but she'll pick up the foul instead. We were asking where Aaliyah Edwards was going to make her mark on this ball game. She had the steal in the previous play and now had this one on the other side. Yeah, bats it away. The pass to Beckers gets it back. And then the finish. Aaliyah Edwards running the floor with the guards. She gets the payout. for Kiki Rice, and on the inside, it's a battle between Sontag. And Paige Beckers trying to battle it out on the block. That foul is gonna actually go against Mika Mule. And you gotta appreciate the post play by Sontag. Trying to post up. Paige Becker is trying to do whatever she can to get around her, but not able to do so. Yeah, Paige Becker gives up three inches. Kiki Rice has been quiet in this fourth quarter. And here comes KK Arnold. Paige looking to free herself up short on the shot on the inside. Wanted the contact call. Kiki Rice sends it in the corner. Jones, triple, count it. And this goes back to the depth on this UCLA team. Everyone who comes in has been a big part of what they've been able to do to maintain this lead. KK Arnold responds with the triple. What an important bucket right now as UCLA looked like it was starting to gain some momentum. Now UConn's got to get it back on defense. That's just her third three of the season. Betts off the glass. How does she get that one to fall, Kelly? I mean, she's been wide open. They started on the top, letting her set a ball screen, and then she rolls, and she is wide open. Paige Beckers tries to get the give and go. Osborne all over her. Nothing going for Paige. Uh, for Griffin able to get the rebound and Paige Becker drops the three. Finally hits her face like it finally falls and makes this a 10 point game as we're approaching the three minute mark. Buckle up. This one's getting a little feisty on the other end as Kiki Rice comes up with the offensive foul and KK Arnold. We knew this would be the case. A top 10 matchup was not going to go down easily. UCLA looked like they had a comfortable lead, but Paige Beckers is trying to tell you otherwise, and she's getting a lot of help from some other players. Paige Beckers with 28 points, four triples on the night. I don't know what more you can say about how important she is to this team and this mark. Triple from up top, just short. And her release is so quick. She had no time coming off that handoff and yet still was able to put up a good looking shot. Brown gets it from Rice. Betts seeing three bodies on the inside. Osborne short on the three, and they'll get it back underneath with a reset shot clock. Wow. A lot of physical play going on in the low post. I don't mind it, honestly, as long as it's consistently called, and I do believe that it has been. Obviously, UConn fans want a call on Betts as she went after that rebound. Kiki Rice being guarded by Aubrey Griffin. 
attracts the double team at the top of the key. Too much hands on the trap up top as Kiki Rice is fouled. Next shot will put the Bruins, or next foul rather, will put the Bruins at the free throw line. What a game we are getting for game four. We've been here since 9 a.m. <laughs> we waited a for this. a slow start, right. A slow <laughs> start for Virginia. Down as many as 15 points in the first quarter. They come back to win. LSU rolling over Niagara, but a team that is so feisty. But down two of their top scores and really fought to the end. Yeah. A one-point game and a finish by Virginia Tech, escaping the upset. And here we are in game four with UCLA looking for their first win against the Huskies in program history. 0-7 coming into this one. So officials making sure everyone is right on the floor. Kiki Rice was supposed to be on, but will be summed out by Brown. I think they they are saying she may have some blood either on a uniform or on her body somewhere. At the trainer at the end of the bench, making sure she's getting taken care of. Is that on the lip? Yeah. Or is that just chapstick? <laughs> Taking a break for chap lips. You know, with the physical play, though, I, I'm not even surprised. We have seen players on the floor for hustle plays. We have seen elbows. We've seen everything. And it's what we expect. Two top teams battling it out to the finish. London Jones knocks down the free throw, so a substitution will come in for the Bruins as Jones checks out. Kiki Rice is standing up saying, hey, coach, I'm, I'm ready to go back whenever you need me. <laughs> Paige Beckers! Single digits. And UConn fans want to travel. Paige Beckers with 31 points makes this a single digit game. Never count the Huskies out. Is that what's tattooed on somebody's arm? I don't know, it should be because Paige Beckers, as long as she's on the floor, you can never count them out. I thought this game was over, to be honest. Three times. Absolutely. 31 points for Paige Beckers after a season of having to sit out with a knee injury. Goes up strong, knocks down the three, oftentimes with so little space. And her quick release has been a big part of what allows her to get off a shot over the extended arms of the defense. Rice at the rim, draws the contact. And Ice Brady will be assessed with the foul. That'll be her third personal. Leah Edwards out of the ball game. After being fouled out. And that's a big blow for UConn because now you've given up your inside presence, whether that's on offense or on defense to defend Lauren Betts. Kiki Rice has been so solid in this game. Now three for four from the free throw line and you start looking at Who's going to be able to step up to the free throw line if this is going to be a crunch time game? 
pushes their lead back to 11. And by the way, we are on triple-double alert right now with Kiki Rice. 22 points, 11 boards, 8 assists in this game. You can think a UCLA trying to take some of the air out of the ball as Brown elevates for that too. Brown now at five points. And you wonder if the absence of Edwards inside allowed that shot to be made by Brown. Osborne just missed Paige Beckers on that second attempt and you can see the deflated look on Paige Beckers. She is gassed. And think about this, Angel. She's got to play a game tomorrow. Yeah. All these teams play two games in this Invitational. And they are going to play a very good Kansas team yeah. that almost knocked out Virginia Tech. Their staff said it was a learning opportunity for them. Actually had a good look towards the end of the game to win it. But just a little bit of miss communication on that last series as UCLA just a minute away from closing this one out. Jones outside with 10 on the shot clock. Nico Mule comes up with it. Paige Beckers has subbed out of the game. KK Arnold keeps her foot on the gas. as Charisma Osborne will just have a second difference from game and shot clock. And Corey Close about to win her first game against the Yukon Huskies. And it's been a long time coming, has not been afraid to schedule them throughout her tenure at UCLA. The eighth meeting for the Bruins. And the eighth time's the charm for Corey Close and UCLA as they shake hands at half court with Gino Ariema. So the number two team takes down UConn.